Hey squad, this is LB back with another video about the Elite Series 2 controller. However, in this video, I'm going to be walking through the Xbox Accessories app. One of the main features that sets the Elite Series controllers apart from the pack. I'll also clear up some of the things that I missed when I was comparing the scuff and the Elite controllers. If you find this video to be helpful in any way, please give a like, comment, and subscribe. And before we go any further, I want to say thank you all for your support and helping the channel grow to 1K subs. Hitting that like button and commenting with all your comments, whether they're witty, funny, insightful, all of them, I love it. Thank you. It's truly amazing, and I appreciate each and every one of you. With that said, let's first talk about how you get to the Xbox Accessories app. No matter if you're on an Xbox One or a Series X, you're going to find it in the same place. Simply hit your Xbox button to bring up the overlay menu. As I was already in settings and the Xbox Accessories app, they show in my recent apps. But to find where it lives natively, tap right with the right bumper until you hit the profile tab on the menu overlay. Scroll down and click settings. Select devices and connections. Then click accessories. This will take you to the same screen I'm on. Depending on what controller is connected is what you'll see on the screen. As my Elite Series 2 is connected, let's walk through some of these settings. Starting where we see the three dots, we have our controller settings. This is where you would come to update and check the firmware on your controller. This is the first place I check if something isn't acting right with my controller, as a simple update could do the trick. You can give your controller a custom name in case you have multiple or you take it someplace where it can get lost in the mix. You can see who the controller is currently assigned to and you can reassign to any other profile on your Xbox. And if you share an Xbox and don't have your Xbox set to auto sign in, you can have your controller sign you in when you turn on the Xbox from your controller. Volume relates to headsets. If you suspect vibration is broken in your controller, you can test it here. And last, you can turn on Copilot. This allows you to link multiple controllers. Helpful maybe for if you have a young one that wants to get in on the action and you want to be their training wheels. Going back to the little light bulb with the question mark is Xbox Assist. Basically your user guide and help menu. Going back again and clicking the icon that looks like a beaker is where you're able to test your configurations. Whatever configuration you set up when you map your buttons, you can come back here and test those. Very helpful versus going in game and testing out if your buttons work correctly. And you can add or view any other accessory that you have connected to your Xbox here. Now let's get into what really makes this app awesome when it comes to the Elite controllers. Profiles allow you to quickly switch between custom configurations with the tap of the profile button on the controller, meaning you can set a custom profile for each of your games. While there's only three profile slots that can be used on the controller at one time, you have the ability to create many more and interchange them as much as you like. So you don't have to worry about overriding one of your favorite profiles just to add a new game that you're playing for the moment. Aside from profile slot placements, you have the ability to rename your profile, delete it, or duplicate it. Now let's get into configurations. My absolute favorite thing about this app is when it comes to button mapping, you can remap just about every button on the controller, obviously including paddles. The only buttons you can't remap are the profile button, start, and select buttons. Also, you can map buttons to serve a primary and secondary purpose if desired. In addition to just remapping buttons, you have the option to map buttons to perform an action. Similar to a macro or hotkeys on the keyboard, you can tap a button to perform an action that might have taken a few steps or a few clicks. For example, you can remap a button to quickly record or see what friends are on. While this is a set list of actions, I feel this is a good assortment that'll fit most needs. Similar to a keyboard, the shift function gives you the ability to use a button, triggers, or sticks for a secondary function. However, you need to dedicate a button to being your shift button, meaning you have to give up use of one of your buttons as it will only function as a shift key. I've been experimenting with this in Warzone as I want to move my marking buttons from the D-pad to my paddles or sticks. So I don't have to take my thumbs off the sticks and stop moving, even if it is for a split second. The same way you would choose an action or a button is the same way you choose a shift function. You just choose it as your secondary action. 
Obviously, when it comes to stick sensitivity, you can leave them as default and adjust them in game if those settings are available and you feel the need to adjust. However, via the app, you can dial in your sensitivity settings a bit more precisely as you're able to adjust the sensitivity curve. You're given four presets that you can test and dial in to your sensitivity liking. I also want to note, as I run through these sensitivity presets, you'll see example representations of the physical stick movement represented by the white circle versus the end game experience related to the chosen sensitivity curve represented by the green circle. The first is delayed, where the actuation of your thumbstick is delayed. This is similar to the feeling of a larger dead zone, and very helpful if you're having stick drift issues. It is essentially taking more stick movement to get from point A to point B. Aggressive serves the opposite purpose. So if you have zero stick drift issues and prefer more of a reaction from your stick movements, but at a steady increasing pace, then this setting is for you. You essentially move your stick less to get from point A to point B. I see instant as a combination of both aggressive and default. And this might be my absolute favorite preset, allowing you to utilize higher sensitivity with your initial stick movement, then evening out the pace as you continue moving your stick to the outer edge. So you get this initial snap and reaction with your stick, taking away any ramp ups and movement speed, then allowing you to keep the rest of that movement at an even pace. This preset is essentially teleporting you one third of the way when going from point A to point B. The smooth preset functions more as a slow ramp up. The smooth sensitivity starts off mimicking what you get of the default. You start at an even pace and then it settles down and slows, almost mimicking that of the delayed sensitivity. Then as you near the end of the curve, it picks up considerably. Sticking to the same point A to point B example is as if you're sitting on a hill then you start going down and you reach a plateau and keep moving until you meet a hill that's at a steeper incline and you move considerably faster. And just like the buttons and paddles, you can utilize another curve as your secondary function. You would most likely have to set a paddle as your shift key to utilize this effectively. This seems a bit impractical to me, but I can see this being useful in some games where this needed sensitivity curve adjustment isn't needed for long term. For example, if you're playing a game with a recurring mini game, the sensitivity and overall gameplay may be different from the main game. So it can be beneficial to have a sensitivity adjustment for these mini games. This would obviously be in place of just setting up a whole entire profile just for these mini games. Curve adjustments allow you to under or overemphasize the chosen sensitivity curve pattern. The calculation relates to the distance the stick needs to travel in any direction to actuate at its appropriate level. With that said, radio calculates the movements of your thumbsticks based on a circle, meaning no matter the distance you go in any direction, it'll be the same distance. So if you were to look at this from a numbers perspective where the stick resting in the middle is zero and the edge being 10, if I were to move my stick to a five in any direction, my action in the game would reflect that of a five. Axis dependent calculates movements based on the X and Y axes, meaning all angles will not result in the same actuation levels. So if you were to move to position five vertically or horizontally, your actuation level would be the same. However, if you move to position five diagonally, your actuation level might match the actuation of a higher or lower position, like a three or eight, depending on your chosen curve type. For example, if utilized with the delayed curve, a diagonal actuation of 10 might feel more like a 7. The true diagonal calculation looks at the true 90 degree diagonal based on the X and Y axes. So similar to axis dependent, but functions closer to that of radio as the actuation distance remains equal in all directions. The main difference I notice here that I actually prefer when compared to radio, true diagonals gives you a defined up, down, left, or right, while allowing you to use smooth and equal diagonals. With radio, it can sometimes be difficult to move my stick truly up, down, left, or right. True diagonals helps me to better achieve true up, down, left, or right movement as it subtly snaps into the groove of the axes once I'm near it. In my Scuff vs. Elite 2 review, I mentioned the Elite 2 didn't have hair triggers and the Scuff did. This was a misstatement as my brain just didn't make the connection based off the name hair trigger. The Elite actually has the same functionality, but it's a bit more advanced. 
with the ability to adjust and test hair triggers in real time. Also, when it comes to hair trigger adjustments, and while I'm not sure how it would be used, you have the ability to create delayed trigger actuations. So like a reverse hair trigger. Maybe this might be helpful for those that are having issues with their triggers or having issues accidentally hitting their triggers. I don't know, maybe you guys can think of some possible situations. Feel free to share in the comments below. Vibration allows you to use all, some, or none of your rumble packs, allowing you to adjust sensitivity to really customize the feel. I love this feature as there are some games that I really love the vibration feedback, but there's some where I absolutely don't want it. For example, in first person shooters, I hate having the vibration on because I feel it can mess with my aim. So this eliminates any need to switch controllers or to try to DIY and remove your rumble packs yourself. And last, you have the ability to adjust the Xbox button brightness. Just in case you're trying to pull out a few more hours of the already long battery life of your Elite 2. And that's the Xbox Accessories app, packed with tons of features that I don't think any other controller can really compete with. But as with anything, I think it can continue to be improved. There are two additions that I think would be cool to see with this app. Well, maybe three. One would be the ability to lock your shift button, similar to a caps lock on the keyboard. Going back to my mini game example, this would allow for use of those secondary curves and buttons without having to hold down that shift key while engaging in that mini game or whatever set activity. The second may already be possible via third party add ons or software, but it could be nice to have the ability to create or combine actions almost like a true macro. Obviously, there should be safeguards in place to prevent cheating with rapid fire and things like that, but macros that would only benefit you, the user on your end. For example, the press of a button would be able to allow me to send a game and party invite to a friend at the same time, or send that all to a group at the same time. I assume those on PC can already do a lot of this, but I think this would be helpful for those that are using consoles. The third being around remapping. Now that the Elite Series 2 is Bluetooth, you can connect it to so many other devices, including iPads, and I heard of even people connecting it to Nintendo Switches. So it would be nice if Microsoft can do something with the app that would allow you to remap to the buttons of those systems, for example. But the biggest thing is that you've been able to use the Elite on a PC for a while now. And what would be nice to see in one of the future updates is the ability to remap your buttons to, say, different key binds or button combinations that you would have on your keyboard. While I've been told this is possible through third-party apps, it should be something that is native to the Xbox Accessories app with this controller. I think we all know Microsoft was a computer company first. Even without any of those additions, I think this app controller combo is a game changer and I wish more controllers could utilize this. And while it's not possible through the Xbox app, it could be possible through computer companion apps like what you get with many peripherals these days. Now I wanna hear from you. What would you add to this app? What do you like most about this app? What do you hate about this app? Are there any other controllers that actually utilize a companion app that allows you to dial in things like this? Let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you all for your support. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video any way helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.